from the technical point of view, there is no, no uh, technical challenge or technical um, disadvantage not to put a confidence and transaction in Bitcoin. So I, I hope actually that in, this, in the next uh, few months actually will be, will be accepted. Wallet Wasabi, coming soon. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Cyberfunks 101. Today we have Pedro Monero Sanchez with us. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> good. Uh, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Ah, quite good, actually. Uh, getting into the summer and nice weather, everything's getting better. <laughs> what? You have good weather? <laughs> We're still a little cold on this side. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, on here for the show, we try to use BitB lingo, which is Bitcoin newbie lingo, because not everybody's at that expert level like you guys. Mm -hmm. um, wants everybody who's doesn't really who doesn't really know about it to get into it, right? So some of the questions today would be similar to questions we've asked him concerning Coin Shuffle, which we'll get into. And um, so basically, you're on the stand today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into the questions. Mm -hmm. uh, give us a bit about your background before Bitcoin. So yeah, I, um, I started in my undergrad and I started looking at uh, mostly network problems. Um, yeah, how the information gets uh, from one part of the world to the other, how how to do that faster. So yeah, I was I was saying like uh, from uh, when I started in the university, I mainly um, was focused on the, on the network part of it. Like, uh, trying to understand how to improve the network relations or how to send messages uh, all around the world, but uh, didn't uh, were, or it was not focused on Bitcoin yet. Uh, it was in the moment in which I started my PhD and in Germany with uh, Professor Aniket Kate that uh, he proposed for the first time this idea of Bitcoin that was a, a bit uh, new to me. But oh, really? I found fascinating actually that it was uh, possible to perform uh, money data transactions and send money all around the world uh, uh, in a different manner, not uh, how we were used to with the with the banking system as up to that date, actually. And uh, okay. also on their hand, uh, also includes uh, some part of networking and messaging or, or between users and and that kind of uh, merged the two, two ideas that I, I liked before, actually. So your first encounter with Bitcoin was mm -hmm. with your Professor. Yes, indeed. Like, uh, uh, I mean, I had read of it. I heard a little of it, uh, but was uh, yeah. At, at that time was around 2013, and he was the first one that really introduced me to to this. Uh, so, Pedro, tell me what first got you enticed to get involved into Bitcoin. Uh, yeah. Um, so after my my graduate, uh, after I finished my graduate studies in, in Spain, I traveled to to Germany, and there. I met uh, my supervisor now, uh, Aniket Kate, and my colleague Tim Rufin, mm -hmm. and they introduced me for the first time this concept of Bitcoin, the idea of uh, this performing payments in an alternative manner to the banking system. And I found it really, really interesting, actually. They, they had already some ideas about uh, how to solve some of open challenges, uh, what uh, other problems that we didn't know how to solve at that moment, and mm -hmm. that uh, interested me, actually, at that point. Get into Bitcoin. Okay, so you've been working with Tim mm -hmm. on Coin Shuffle. Can you explain what is Coin Shuffle? So the basic idea of Coin Shuffle is, is really simple. It's a uh, imagine that there is a group of friends and all of them have a, a certain amount of bitcoins. Let's say one bitcoin each, and they want to lose the the, the link or the track that uh, each bitcoin belongs to to what person. All right. So. One easy way to do that would be that they close their eyes and they exchange the coins between each other. And in such a manner, they, at the end, nobody will know which coin went to, to which other. The whole. Okay. So we will uh, avoid to, we will hide actually the, the relation of uh, what coin belonged to what person. Okay. Uh, we, we do that in a, in a more sophisticated way with some protocol. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. All right. How was it working on that project? Fun, challenging? Uh, it was super fun, actually. For me, it was my, my first uh, research project, like uh, my first really uh, 
a strong and hard research project and was also mm -hmm. the first project I worked with with Tim and it was uh, right. really for both of us actually um, because I think uh, the moment that we were solving one problem another problem mm -hmm. was appearing and it gave us actually one month of, of hard work but also really really fun right mm -hmm. sounds like yeah you yeah, could keep working and doing more and creating more stuff mm -hmm. um can you give us a, an idea of coin shuffle the changes over the years mm -hmm. yeah definitely so um in the first version of coin shuffle we we basically focus on, on give a first solution of, of the problem um and then we we really focus or we really uh, inspire ourselves from mixing networks like the Tor network today, for example. Mm -hmm. And we use a similar notion in which uh, basically the, the coins going through a process in which every user has to do some operations in a linear manner, in a fashion manner. So we give us the information to the first user. The first user does uh, some re-encryption or randomization as it's in the Tor node will do, for example. And then we give okay. One and on forum. Um, that work that we proved that it's secure and everything is fine, but um, we saw that obviously the more users we have, the the slower the protocol becomes because uh, they said that uh, the thing is really sequential. Okay, so how did you mm -hmm. change, fix that problem? Did you uh, fix that in Coin Shuffle plus plus and? Okay. Yeah, indeed. Uh, what do we thought is, uh, can we do something about that? And then uh, what it came up is uh, this solution that we call it now called Shuffle Plus Plus, indeed. All right. In which, uh, we achieved the same idea, the same protocol, but now we no longer require this uh, sequence of actions between users. Instead, they can come all together, perform all the cryptographic operations in a limited number of rounds, in, in three rounds, actually. And right. at the end, of this uh, shorter protocol, they still achieve the, the properties that we wanted. Ah, so, so now it's faster and easier to use. Yeah, indeed. Like from from our experiments that we, we did uh, before, the, the time was uh, obviously linear in the number of users. So even with fifty users, it would take around several minutes uh, to to finish one round of coin shuffle. Okay. Now with coin shuffle plus plus, because we don't have to wait for all of them to, to perform operations. We do it all at once. Even with 50 or even 100 users, the, the operations will take only several seconds. So we really gain a lot of Wow. That's a big change. Wow. It, it was. I think that was a huge breakdown in the, of, the, of the protocol, actually. From minutes to seconds. Wow. OK. Um, with regards to confidential transactions, you can define what that is. Um, when do you think it will come into Bitcoin? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, um, <laughs> for, for my study, it should be tomorrow, actually. I think it's something that we should really put in, into, into Bitcoin. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, you, um, there is uh, the process of adding a new functionality into Bitcoin is not an easy, an easy process unless it's, uh, it's agreed by everybody. So basically, the, the fact that we need an agreement among uh, a majority of people to add a new functionality is going to take a, a, a long process to add confidential transaction into Bitcoin. From, uh, from one side, actually, um, we have a new extension of Coin Shuffle, which is this, as we call it, value shuffle. And the point is that once the confidential transaction enter into Bitcoin, we can directly apply value shuffle, and we not we not only get the the performance of Coin Shuffle mm -hmm. plus but we also managed to, to hide the amounts that are being shuffled and certain other properties that comes with confidential transactions. Ah, so once that is implemented, value shuffle will just... Yeah, so that's what, right the, that's what we, we actually showed in our research papers, that once the confidential transactions are fully implemented and fully available in, in the main network, there is, mm -hmm. a, yeah, there is a certain properties and certain... Uh, advantages that will be given for free, or we will get it just by implementing value shuffle there. Well, hoping that happens within <laughs> a few years, or at least next year or something. Yeah, I hope. I mean, I think I think there is no uh, from my from the technical point of view, there is no no uh, technical challenge or technical um, disadvantage not to put a confidential transaction in Bitcoin. So. 
I, I hope actually that in this in the next uh, few months actually will be will be accepted and will be integrated. Okay. Few months, okay. Um, what do you see? I guess with regards to the future of Coin Shuffle, it will be value, shuff, um, value shuffle, right? Yeah. Um, so, do you have any other future thoughts with regards to Coin Shuffle? Uh, right now, we are. Um, we believe that the value shuffle is the the, the best approach that we could uh, reach in the. Mm -hmm. And still solving the problem of mixing coins between between a set of, uh, of people that want to perform mixing, uh, okay. yeah, because I think we, uh, yeah, we solve the problem of performance. So now it's, uh, it's as fast as, as we believe it can go, and we also solve the problem of um, confidentiality of, of the amount. So one of the drawbacks with the coin for plus plus was that because the amounts were public, uh, everybody had to shuffle or mix the same number of bitcoins. Otherwise, right. looking at the amounts, you can see how the how which you can link to trace it back to where it came from the source. Exactly. So just looking at the amounts, you can see who paid to whom. Um, in value Alpha, actually, we also achieved to to hide the, the amounts. So we believe it's is possibly, um, if not the the last solution, is really close to the optimal solution that we can achieve in this uh, decentralized manner of, uh, of doing the the, the shuffling protocol. Okay, and do you think there's any other thing you'd like to change um, in the future with it? I think um, I think it would be interesting actually to see because um, value shuffle is a fuel, a pure decentralized version of of, of the coin mixing. Uh, okay. There are many other solutions out there which are pure centralized, or there is a a mixing server that does the process of, of shuffling. I think it, looking at the middle of both uh, situations and see if uh, a semi-centralized or semi-decentralized solution will make sense, first of all. And second, which are the advantages that you can achieve by by variating the the, um, the set of trust, trust assumptions and protocol assumptions that you can make. I think that would be an interesting ah. direction, actually. To see. Oh, yeah. OK, great. Um, there is a BCH implementation of Coin Shuffle and called Cash Shuffle. It is an electron plugin. What do you think about it? Ah, I think uh, it's, uh, first of all, I think it's interesting that uh, any implementation tries to to imp or any people try to implement Coin Shuffle because, um, really from the research point of view, we look at the technical the technical possibility of it, but we never look the the last mile. We never probably look at the how to satisfy all the requirements in, in practice. So I think every every implementation is always a, a good news for for us actually. For that. Uh, for the details of, of this one, um, I didn't have the time yet to look at the, the detailed implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, I will have to, to look at it and, and look at how they implemented the different cryptographic constructions and the different trust assumption to, to have a better opinion of if it's good or bad or how it is actually. How it is. Okay, fair enough. Well, with regards to that, what do you think will uh, happen in the future with regards to Bitcoin on the whole? Mm -hmm. I think as uh, um, Bitcoin will become really like a, a strong alternative for, for payment uh, from payments uh, to alternative to the, the banking system that we have today, mm -hmm. and I'm impressed that every year actually more and more researchers and industry actually are interested on, on this field. So I think is uh, Bitcoin is actually here here to stay, and it's, it's really good that we are improving Bitcoin not only from from the privacy point of view as, as I'm interested on. But also from other technical challenges like uh, networking, how to do the uh, whether uh, how to do the blockchain more um, available to all the people, how to how to bring the, the size so that is more manageable for small devices and, and so on. Right. So I think yeah, because, uh, yeah. because people like myself, we're not exactly a we're not a developers. Mm -hmm. We don't really know about it. We don't really understand it. So. I'm really hoping that it becomes easier for us to use. When do you think that would happen? <laughs> it's complicated right now. I I think that's the really missing one of the really missing points in the Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin community. I totally agree. Um, mm -hmm. uh, even even today, the conferences that I am attending, like uh, the Bitcoin workshop or the BPays or all the others, those these conferences, I still really focus on research and technical problems. 
Uh, but I agree that there are many people that want to use it and don't know exactly how, how? where to start or how to how to do it. And there are not many um, documentations or there are not many places in which uh, non-technical users can go and, and look and try to understand how it's going on. I think it's a it's a really good point and we should work on that. On the other hand, there is might not be uh, the problem is like there are not much incentives to do that probably from uh, academia and also uh, business um mm -hmm. because uh, you spend time on that and, and you hope that people use it but if not uh, then probably there's uh, there's not much incentive on it but yeah. it'd be super interesting actually if, if if we do it because i believe that many more users actually will use it in the end of course so yes for another project for you to take up <laughs> that would be good indeed thanks all right that was our last question thank you very much for your time and i do look forward to hearing much more from you in the future thank, thank you, you. Uh, thank you for the invitation and yeah it was a pleasure to talk to you all right see you bitties wallet wasabi coming soon metrics that people have traditionally studied don't really capture the fact that you can use information from other people to better de-anonymize you.